Hey, if you're shopping for an adventure van or you're adventure van curious, you don't want to miss this video. We interview Peter, owner of Rover Vans outside of Chicago, a small volume craft builder of near custom vans. The builds generally are anywhere between 50 and 100 grand plus the van. So that adds up to about 150, which is about right for an adventure van, except these are kind of different than the other guys. Stay to the very end, and I'm going to show you how to help determine which floor plan is best for you. And by the way, if we're meeting for the first time, howdy. My name is Scott. Welcome to my camper van channel. Go small, live large. Let's jump into it. All right, so what we want to do is, um, Peter, again, thanks for your time. This is the bad boy we want to actually um, give you a tour of. Super popular uh, chassis. It's a 144 high roof uh, from a Sprinter 4x4. Uh, came in as a cargo van. So it comes with no windows. Uh, we make all the openings, just all the windows. Comes in on stock black wheels, which we change with these three uh, relation ones. Um, got a whole bunch of exterior stuff here that we really like. To let's um, let's do a quick tour of the um, exterior, yeah. and we'll probably want to talk about this as well. Uh, one thing that's cool about Rover Vans is they have a really nice accessory business. Um, so we want to call out some of that we, too. We can bend those two-inch tubes. Um, and I think it looks really cool. It kind of matches the, how around the roof I guess on top as well. For sure. So I, yeah, originally I just didn't want that to look like a ladder. Like I wanted it to be. A statement. Yeah. Um, and I love how you got your laser cut in, your, your logo name here. This is great. So I'm kind of curious, people might be thinking, well, how the heck to get up the ladder with the tire here? But you guys use pegs. Right. So let me hand you the camera, maybe kind of demonstrate what that looks like um, climbing up, and then I'll hand you the camera so we can see what it looks like on top. Look at that, the Instagram shot that everybody loves. Um, pretty cool. Um, let me hand you the camera, and then you can show folks what's up on top of uh, that roof rack. Kind of yeah. Um, Sure. Um, again, Freedom Van Gogh uh, roof rack. Like the, uh, we like the design, very kind of modular. You can do lots of things. We've got a Domatic RTX 2000 AC on here, uh, Max Air fan, and then these are two 170 watt panels, uh, solar panels. Uh, yeah, nice. And then we got some cool rigid lights on the back for setting up camp. And then you can see how the Fiamma is attached to the side of the roof rack. Right, this is what it looks like from the, from the open door view. So this is a, a bed we're kind of familiar with in adventure vans. It lowers and uh, raises. Sure. And you can see the flare outs here on both sides, which is pretty awesome. Peter, just a massive amount of garage storage space. And people are always curious, can I get my bikes in here? How much, maybe it's a dog kennel, something like that. So if you can help us measure this, um, you know, length, yeah. width, and height, that Absolutely. would really help. I think height is super important for the bikes. Um, right. So if you get the seat underneath, you've got 39 inches. Uh, 39 the, inches. Yeah, the clearance is just over 37. Uh, I find that anything at 37 and over, you typically don't have to lower the seat of the bike when, lo uh, when loading the bike. Um, depends on the folks. Uh, some taller guys maybe will have to lower it, but for the most part, you're gonna be able to load this bike without the front wheel, without having to really do anything. Super um, awesome. If you can measure the, the, um, yeah. the so depth there. For the depth, we're almost uh, five feet, like 59 and a half. Huge. So and then the width here is? The width, 47 and a half. 47, so that is cavernous. Yeah. Right. So this, uh, this layout originally, we had a client um, custom order this layout and he has a tandem bike. Um, he likes to ride with his wife and a long, long bike, so I forget exact the measurements, but basically the bike will go in here this way, giving you seven and a half, or let's see, 89 and a half inches. I believe his bike, when we mounted it, it was, it was seven feet altogether. So a little over so, seven feet. Yeah, so the cool thing is he's able to put that long tandem bike in here, uh, load it and unload it. And then, you know, he can take it out and park it and still have that, right. you know, open space. Or skis or maybe even like a surfboard, skis, I mean, stuff, yeah. I mean, a anything. Lot things, a lot of things can kind of go in this space. Um, Super yeah. amazing. We, we like using L-Track uh, a lot. Uh, this one, we actually have. L-Track, what is that? So um, this is originally, I think, used in airplanes to secure cargo. Mm. Um, basically, there's a different attachments that you can secure here. 
and it has a pretty good, I think it's like a 2,000 pound rating. I forget again exactly, but there's different attachments that you can do like um, for, um, bike fork attachment, for example, or any different straps that you can attach and hold down the cargo. Uh, there's one more over there so that Secure the front side and the back side, yep. if you will. That's very great. This is probably the um, awning. That's the awning crank. Uh, crank correct. Um, what we're looking at here is cabinetry, I'm guessing uh, electrical. Is that a fair so assumption? So that's the electric cabinet, correct. So um, I'll open one of them up, give you a view. This is a 300 amp uh, system from Renogy. Uh, this is the basic electric package that we offer. Uh, what we like about this package the most is really affordable. Um, and it's kind of like very simple to operate, simple to install, basic entry package that works pretty well. And you can kind of upgrade that as necessary. So this Absolutely. is a controller panel, looks like. Yep. It fuses, oh, actually. So that's your yeah, 120 volt. Uh, nice. So that's for the galley. I love uh, your badge. That's kind of cool. Thanks. <laughs> that's cool. And then looking on this side. Um, this, water cabinet. It's a water cabinet. So we have a pull-out shower in here. Oh, nice. Pull this guy out. Uh, you have hot and cold water. Uh, we actually have a water heater in this guy. And this tucks away nicely. And this one is the control for the temp, is that? Correct. Okay. Yeah. So Got you can it. control, you can, it's a mixed valve. Okay. Uh, uh, this will give you the uh, water this level. This is where you fill? Correct. So yeah, gravity, fill, gravity fill, which is really mm -hmm. nice. Um, and then water gauge, which is kind of cool to have an analog. Yeah. I like that. That's kind of sexy. Uh, yeah, I like how it went with the... Uh, with the cover. So the water tank's inside, how many right. gallons does that? Um, I think it's a 20, I can't remember exactly. So it fits right yeah, in there. So right again, for uh, your oh, sure flow, that's mm -hmm. what I have. Um, for, um, so it's really kind of a four season van then, so you can be in pretty cold climates. Yeah. And uh, that's super great. Well, let's keep going around. Uh, oh, before we do, I know some mm -hmm. step here, so what's the deal here? That's actually stock from Mercedes. Uh, came Interesting. In the van, very nice and useful. Um, yeah. Okay. Nice. Let's keep moving around. Here's the other flare here. You can see yeah, that. Yeah, you can see it's a little bit smaller. Yeah, a little bit smaller. Emblem, that's cool. The window again. So let's talk about this. This is kind of different. Normally there's a big cable here that holds the table up. Correct. Uh, what, are we, what are we missing here that uh, you're doing differently? Uh, we're going to do a different hinge on this. This is kind of like... Uh, it's a no, this is a sewer. beta hinge, uh, but, beta but hinge. The, the cable thing is messing up. Yeah, was... so we're going to use magnets and this guy will go away. Oh, super Take cool. Away. Much cleaner. Yeah. Much cleaner. And this, yeah. you can't see it on the camera, but there's just a little bit of texture here. It's just really, really beautiful. And I love how you have the exposed edges. Yeah. Tell us about the, the furniture cabinetry here. Yeah, so the cabinets are from Wilderness Vents Company in Canada. We've been working with them for about a year and a half now. Love, love their furniture. Super high quality. Um, everything's made out of Baltic birch. They do a beautiful job yeah. um, laminating this. Uh, they have really nice uh, colors available. <clears throat> Good guys to work with too. Yeah, that's always important. Yeah. Um, and I just love this idea here with this kind of metal edge. Um, so, so nice. A running board is probably coming with? Yeah, we haven't yeah. decided which ones we're gonna get yet. Um, okay. We've looked at some different ones. Uh, I like the owl ones. They're, mm. they're our competition when it comes to accessories, but the running boards they make, they're beautiful, and I think that's that's what we're gonna put on this guy. And this little guy here sticking out, what is that yeah, indicative so that's of? That's the uh, exhaust pipe from the Webasta heater. So <clears throat> we install an auxiliary heater for, you know, when it's cold. Um, really cool, it hooks up to the diesel tank. Um, so there's not, you know, you don't have to have a separate uh, source of fuel. Okay. Very efficient device. Uh, we've actually been only using Webasta products. Okay. So before we jump in, let's measure this. A lot of people are curious about the width of these yeah. openings. Oh, this opening is two feet. Two feet, so 24 inches. That's pretty wide. Yeah. Uh, so if you're loading gear, you're on the larger size, that's a pretty sizable opening, I would say. Um, I'm super curious. Let's jump inside and see what's going on. So maybe we'll start with the front great room, as I call it here. So clearly the passenger seats, uh, the, you know, the cab seats spin around, which is yep. super awesome. Permanent table. Not a lagoon. I personally thank you for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, so why this versus a lagoon table? A little bit more stable, I think, than a lagoon table. Um, you can mount, you can actually use a, a bigger top. Yeah, way bigger. Yeah. And uh, it's a little bit easier to take out completely. 
Nothing against Lagoon, we use them all the time. Let's measure this. I'm just kind of curious. Yeah. Because so, I just love my permanent table. This one is 29 and a half by 17 and three quarters. So, so you could 18. definitely, so one of the things I like to do is, can two people sit at the table, in this case facing each other, and have a full table set up? So 10 inch plates, cups, silverware, you know, bottle of wine or whatever, and that could easily be accommodated here yeah, with absolutely. no problem. So this is an insulated curtain and it's a little bit more rigid than just a regular curtain but it was important to me in this van to keep the space open uh when needed because like myself i rarely take a shower in a van um, i'm more of a weekend warrior i like to go to my kids soccer games and whatnot and hang out in the van or typically i just go kiteboarding or, mo or mountain biking so this area is, was important for me to kind of like get out of the way if needed um, so we've been playing with the idea of having this type of shower, which is a pretty sizable shower. Yeah, let's measure them. I'm, yeah. I'm super interested. And it's a so, very different implementation. Again, it's not a curtain that kind of sticks to you. This has almost like a soft wall, yeah. it looks like to me. But yeah, let's measure. So width-wise, we're at 28 inches. 28. And then this way, we're let's see, at 20. It's 28 by 20. Um, pretty good size. When you get in there, it, you know, it's not i think most showers are a little bit smaller um and then the shower head the shower head is actually going to be attached to the faucet here okay and then you just hang it above we're gonna got a little attachment okay um but the idea behind this was and see how this goes so you can detach it and then this will be collapsible into itself in this way but you're gonna be able to put this guy away like that and then this kind of folds up into this and then it's right and correct um and then if you're you know you're not using the shower and it's already dry and whatnot then you're gonna be able to basically unhook it fold it up like this and then this part will go down and then you've got all this new room to right. do with whatever and that's um, a dramatic difference with that shower enclosure absolutely out of the van um, which is kind of the whole point right yeah i mean you can put you can load up you know kites or bike gear or like just any kind of gear and use this space um but the biggest thing for me too is that you can actually have better use of the of the seat that turns into a bed so let's see what that looks like um these look like yeah. super comfy seats yeah, number they're, one they're, they're very comfortable um so the seat is also from wilderness in canada um so now you take the shower away which you know if you had a permanent shower in here you wouldn't be able to pull this guy back right kind of you know put these guys down but i mean this really changes like there's so much more room in here now. all right um move the table over a little bit oh which slides back yeah. and forth that's cool yeah and it's super Thirty-two, right? Uh, just because it's supported here and on the leg. Super interesting. Yeah. Now let's say you've got, you know, maybe mom and dad up here, a couple of kids, mm -hmm. or a couple of adults. A couple of adults want to travel with you. Does this collapse into a bed? This changes into a bed. And oh I'll my show gosh! You how. Yeah, let's see so, that. That's pretty yeah, interesting. So basically, the table comes off pretty easily. Like this shift this guy over, and then you collapse this guy out of the way. Um, let's put it there for now. Just put a temper over here. This is the transformer bed. Correct. You have a handle here. This guy will loop up like this. Uh, these two little guys come up. And then a little tricky part. Like that. Here. And oh, yeah. then it will connect into. And then you have a bed. Basically, your feet will go on the seat. You can lower the seat a little bit, and you have a nice sleeping pad. That is really nice use of space. Um, and I love that it's really flat. You're not dealing with lumbar supports on the other side, uh, like you sort of do on mine. Uh, I'm curious, let's let's measure this bad boy. Uh, again, if you got a couple of kids or uh, an adult that wants to travel with you. So you're at five foot seven. Five foot seven here. And then the width-wise? Width-wise, we're at 33 and a half. 33 and a half. So a single adult, kind of normal-ish size, um, can fit very comfortable, yeah. you know, bolsters up with some pillows. 
Um, or your feet, like you say. Um, I would probably do it the other way around myself. Yeah. But uh, So this is actually a bifold seed. Um, we didn't have a tr uh, trifold in stock, but had this been a trifold seed, there's a third part to it that oh, will basically collapse back here this way. So if you had the third part on the, on the trifold, I mean, you would have a sleeping area of seven feet seven and a half feet give or take so that would accommodate yeah most everybody <laughs> yeah which so that's the cool idea about like you know getting the shower out of the way collapsing yeah. it down and then you know for the night boat you have two usable beds that is so great let's leave um, this configuration here but it kind of exposes the two things number one this uh your your cabinetry and then i just love this little touch back here um separating the space visually but not being obtrusive. It's really a clever approach. So tell us about this a little bit and then the walls, because this is fabric, it looks like. Correct. And then we'll talk about this. So yeah. So starting with uh, with these two guys, so the, the whole reason for them is basically to install the track for the bed to travel up and down. We try to make this as small as possible, but we just needed a little bit more space here to hold the, uh, the belts that will pick the bed up and then the track on the other side. Right. And what I find interesting, Peter, is is what I think a lot of people do is just have this be a straight piece of wood all the way down. Correct. Making this feel more enclosed than it really needed to be. And by just doing this little extra work here, it really gives a sense of space by giving the form and function that you need to run the bed system. Correct. Very clever. And then what is this we're looking at? It feels, yeah, so it's cloth. Is, it's a uh, tweed fabric. Tweed Very fabric. Popular, it's really uh, nice feeling. Yeah, it's a super uh, popular fabric that Van Builders use. Um, we do all the upholstery in-house. Um, it's uh, There is a foam padding underneath here. And just gives it a nice warm touch, I think. Yeah, for sure. And it comes in a number of colors. This one's kind of a oh, great tweed. It's really pretty. Um, mentioned foam. Is there insulation? You guys are pretty insulated behind this? Yeah. Uh, we use a combination of tinselet and uh, headlock wall. Okay. Uh, so we stuff this stuff as much as possible in every every piece of the every nook and cranny yeah <laughs> okay um just love the huge window it doesn't look that big from the outside but from inside it's yeah. pretty ginormous yeah it's pretty pretty big Actually, i don't think i've opened this one before yeah that's really nice yeah. has a nice screen too screen for bugs keeps bugs out and then above it we have this i'm gonna get called a cabinet but it's not really a cabinet. What are we looking at here? Um, we, we call them moon bags. Um, moon bags? Moon bags. Uh, and it's the moon van der moon. Oh Vander my God, moon. that's funny. Uh, so it's a sister company we have in Poland. Handmade. Uh, there's almost seven, I think it's over 700 components to like each one of these bags. Holy um, cow. Ridiculous amount of time they go into it, but they're super high quality. Uh, lots of storage. I mean, you have, you have these little uh, hanging pieces that you can attach yeah, to. Yeah, like clips, right? So yeah. You then up here put things on this way yeah there's more um we've got netting down here so you can kind of put mm -hmm. lightweight stuff in here again like more clips um these will never open when you drive yeah, zip. so it's kind of super secure on them and then what's cool is wow. like they they are hard on the inside it's plastic but they're soft so like you can bump your head into them and not hurt as much as if you bump into a probably wind. weighs way less than a wood yeah. cabinet of similar dimension much, much lighter much smaller yeah uh this one is actually mounted here permanently because we didn't have all the hardware again you know beta stuff mm -hmm. um but the new hardware that's coming in you're gonna basically be able to undo four uh latches and take this guy out so nice and it really feels it gives a very different feel than a traditional wood cabinet yeah. and it kind of blends into the the background so again it, it it's there but it's not sticking out at you correct uh, which is really nice <laughs> i think we'll see this when we get outside these bad boys um you can actually take the they're removable right correct okay so that kind of rounds out the great room the second bed the shower. So let's talk about the galley. What are we looking at here? Again, more lovely cabinetry. I wish you folks could feel this because it's really, it just feels so good. Yeah. Right? No, it's a good looking cabinet. It's, it's not glossy. Quality. It's not matte, although it's on the matte side, yeah. but it just, it has this little bit of texture to it. There you can kind of see it. I just love how they have the exposed um, quality of the wood. Um, and then this laminate. Yeah, so just give us a run through on the galley. Yeah. Um, so I 
don't like always cooking in one spot. Uh, so you basically, you don't, we don't have an indu induction cooktop that's built in, uh, but you can basically put this guy over here and you have lots of room um, for whatever else that you're, you're working with. And then you can take the induction cooktop, plug it into the galley and cook outside of you if needed. Okay. Let's measure that. There's the tape measure right there. Let's measure yeah. the, the length and the, the, so the whole length we're looking at just over four, four feet. That's huge. Yeah, so actually 50 and a half inches. So that's huge. On your part. And here, so we have 24 and a half inches here, which is again huge. Uh, and it comes down to just under 18. So what I like about this is, as you say, if you don't need the induction cooktop, you have tons of space here. And if you are using it, there's, you know, assuming it's using this space here, you have all of this here, and you can still have a functional sink, which, um, whoa, what is that? The grill. Yeah, that's just, um, you can uh, put your cups or whatever and dry them. Okay. Yeah. That's so, kind of neat. Thumbs off. I like that. A really deep sink. Yeah. With a uh, kind of residential faucet, which is great, not chrome. That's kind of cool. Um, really well thought out. Point being is if you're using the sink, you still have a lot of extra space here to functionally work with your induction cooktop. So very smart. And then down here we have storage, looks like. Yeah. Uh, in here we've got, um, I think it's like a seven liter, I forget how many gallons. Uh, so basically all, all your water from the sink will come in there. Okay. Uh, easy to kind of dump and you don't have to deal with the tank underneath the vent. Right. Um, Again, four season capability, yeah. very important. So here is just an access to the plumbing. And some little bit of storage. Yeah. Well done. And this guy. Nice. So, so this way. And there are water heaters that's in here. Okay, so that's pretty much a systems, not storage. But if we look up above, there's a lot of storage here. Yeah. Which is... storage here, and then we have a pretty big guy down here. Oh, yeah. Hot style, that's huge yeah. for sure. And this, since we're down here, let's look at the fridge. Uh, that's a Norcold unit. Um, we like this, I think it's uh 2.7 cubic feet. Tiny freezer, but nonetheless, the fridge space is yeah. huge yeah. for a uh, fridge yeah. of that size. For a fridge that size is, it's very deep, yeah. It does require a deeper cabinet, but you get a lot of storage in here, hence the extra thing. But you utilize that space really well, exactly. And then up above we have kind of standardish yeah. cabinetry. More storage. Which again is really well done. Using real hinges, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, just lovely. Uh, positive lock. And then there's a, a light here. Correct. Uh, there's a switch on the end of the galley. In the galley. Let's see if I can That's figure it out. Middle one right there. Middle one? Yep. All right. Ooh, look at that kind of a track light looking thing. That's... I love that. I love that. Behind you is the bed. The power bed. Um, the power bed. Yeah, so I like this guy a lot because it gives you full access to the garage. Um, so we, we had the mattress done in house. Uh, so we, we do all of our upholstery again at Rover Vents. Uh, I think the guys did a pretty good job on it. So it's a three piece uh, memory foam mattress. Um, so these two pieces, they kind of stay in place. Um, you could take them off if you wanted to use the area as a desk or whatever. So they're very easy to oh, yeah. basically drop like that. It looks um, like it can go up just a tad bit more as I did. So it will go up. Um, we've installed a stopper disc because we installed it before the mattress came in. So that it and also right. gives um, Yeah, we, the bed functionality. will actually go up a little bit more uh, okay. now that we have the mattress in here. All right. So, so if you're on the... Um, smaller size, you can probably stand up here pretty easily. Um, almost, I'm the smaller almost. Size. Um, but a lot of folks, like I say, could maybe set up a chair situation and have a, a standing desk or a working area of some type, yeah, uh, with a bed up. And a lot of folks in the adventure van space load this up with you know sliding trays and all kinds mm -hmm. of craziness, yeah, uh, that really adds to the functionality. A lot of possibilities in here. So, Peter, I've jumped outside, let's um, have you lower the bed so we can kind of see that in action. So pretty awesome. And I can see the tracks here that you were talking about, uh, which is great. But again, just there is no claustrophobia when you're in bed here no. and still have all this amazing garage storage down here. 
So people are probably thinking about what's the availability like, um, what's the price points, and um, just help us with some of that general information. Yeah. Um, price point, our, our bills start around 55,000. Uh, all depends on, you know, how many add-ons and, you know, how many exterior things you want to add on. Um, typical client will spend between 75 and a hundred thousand dollars with building with us. Yeah. Um, now that comes with a free van or something or what? No, no, you have to, uh, so I pre-ordered a bunch of vans. So we, we constantly keep getting these vans in every month or so. Um, so if you actually want to get on a wait list with us, um, you can be assigned a van, which I think is big. Um, you can take one of the assignments. Um, we've been able to get sprinters uh, pretty regularly. Uh, Trans has been difficult, uh, yeah. but we've gotten a few of them. So wait time, so if you like put a deposit down and then there's a chassis available or you have one coming in, um, build time is probably a couple months, I'm guessing? So or? build time is anywhere from six to eight weeks. Six um, to eight weeks. Right now we're booking early 2023. Um, so probably st starting, start new builds around January, 2023. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is being recorded mid June, 2022. So that's not too bad. No. Six, eight months and you'll be, uh, out roaming around. Uh, yeah. We're hoping roving to, around, roving around yeah. in your Rover van. Yeah. We're um, hoping with the big, it's really great. I just love, uh, you know, the small van builders that are really craft, uh, man, craftsman oriented, working with a the customer. They have some standardized floor plans, we'll call it, but there's, right. uh, a lot of uh, custom elements you guys can do, and you really work with your clients to find out how they want to RV, why do they want to RV, which enables, you know, how do our RV systems enable that. I'm just always impressed by the quality of your product. It's so innovative. Um, so just my hat's really off to you. And you guys have grown quite a bit since we first met you about two yeah, years ago. So for sure. um, I just love to see a success story, you know, entre entrepreneurial American Combined with uh, the staff in Poland, you know, making things happen so people can make their travel dreams come true. It's just so great. Uh, Peter, just thanks a ton for yeah, um, you your for time. Coming. And um, if you haven't seen our, our live uh, van tour on What's Up Wednesday, my show, YouTube Live every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Central, you want to hit that up because a lot of folks ask questions um, in that video. So um, just a big thumb up for Peter. And uh, until we see you soon. Yeah. Peter, Thank good you. seeing you and we'll see you soon. So I hope you enjoyed that video. I had a blast making it with Peter. And if you go visit my website, gosmallliveLarge.com, here's what you'll find. And that is a worksheet and how to build a toolkit to help you determine which floor plan best serves your RV needs. It's free, free download. Just go to my site, get it for yourself, and then take that shopping with you when you're looking for a van. Till we see you soon, wish you to journey on. Cheers.